on this special episode of Ghost Hunters International. Hey, how are you? Destination Truth's Josh Gates joins the team. I'm really excited to get out there and work with this group to investigate Frankenstein's castle. Frankenstein is the blood brother of the devil. Is the inspiration for the classic horror story more fact than fiction? Are you the Frankenstein haunting the ground? Is there anyone in this room with us? Is that a gasp? You saw that, right? Yeah. What will they uncover in the evil of Dr. Frankenstein's lab? My closest brush with death is Andy Andrews nearly killing me. Is it GHI's turn to wake the dead? Something just walked right over here. Josh Gates from Destination Truth. We invited Josh to investigate Castle Frankenstein's. Josh is a cryptozoologist, and many of the techniques that he does to try and dismiss myths and legends are the same as our own. Let's go. Okay. My name is Josh Gates. I am the host of Destination Truth, which is a travel adventure series that follows me around the world in search of the truth behind stories of uh, notorious cryptozoological creatures. I had a great time hosting the Ghost Hunters Live Halloween show, and so when they asked me to come and investigate with them at Frankenstein's Castle, I couldn't pass it up. It was a great opportunity. And Josh, it's actually great that you're able to come along with us. We're excited to see what you think. Yeah, we, we don't do a lot of paranormal stuff on Destination Truth. We're looking for, like, these big dangerous animals, and everyone is just hoping that, like, my hand gets ripped off by something. I'm going to be interested just to see how all of you work and be able to kind of observe firsthand and, and participate firsthand in the investigation. So, Donna, what's the case? Frankenstein's Castle. It's located in Darmstadt, Germany. And as probably most of you know, it was the inspiration for Mary Shelley's book, Frankenstein. It was about a mad scientist who created this monster out of body parts. Mary Shelley's book, even though it's fiction, there was a thread of it that is true. There actually was a man back in the 1600s. His name was Conrad Dippel Frankenstein. He was an alchemist. An alchemist was someone who studied natural philosophy, chemistry, and pharmacology. The best known goal of the alchemist was to try and turn lead into gold. A lesser known goal was to try and create an elixir of life. What he was rumored to do was go and dig up graves, get these bodies to use for his elixir of life. And he claimed that the formula would allow him to live to the age of 135. How did that work out for him? Uh, it didn't. Actually, he took it and he died. He actually died in the castle. <laughs> that's, that's not good. <laughs> not so good. Uh, they say that the castle is haunted by his ghost and also the ghosts of the, the people that he dug up. All right, guys, we're almost there, so let's get in there and see what's going on. Well, this looks incredible. Oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> wow. It's not so nice. Wow, this should be good, huh? Josh, if you want to go on the tour with us, that'd be terrific. Sure. All right, you guys going to unpack and get ready? Okay. Hello, gentlemen. Sir. Hello. Right. How are you? Welcome at the Frankenstein Castle. Pleasure gentlemen, to nice to meet you. I'm very happy to have an investigator's team on Frankenstein Castle because there is a lot of strange experiences around Frankenstein Castle. And so I want to find out the truth. Can you tell me about the history of the castle? That was a man who lived here that was named Arbogast von Frankenstein from 948 after Christ was born. And the family of Frankenstein died out in 1602. And did the castle fall into ruin in 1602? It fell into ruin in the 19th century. Johann Konrad Dippel von Frankenstein, he was a grave robber and he did a lot of experiments here. He cut off the arms and the legs. And the minister, of, he told the people, Frankenstein is a blood brother of the devil. A lot of people report his ghost is roaming on the roof of the chapel. It's a beautiful castle. Would you mind giving us a tour? Yes, let's start here at the chapel. This room is left in the same way as it was during the Middle Ages. That's a very special stone. The last night of Frankenstein, in the age of 20, he was going to his girlfriend and riding his coach, he was too fast, and so he was thrown out of the coach and broke his neck. People told me that they heard this man speaking, and he tells how hard it is to die so young and to die without a girlfriend. So people have seen his ghost in this room. I think a lot of people come here who feel um, presence inside the chapel. There are many stories, many ghosts who haunt this chapel. One of the ghosts should be Frankenstein, of course. 
Right? In this area, two ghosts are known and they don't want to have the castle disturbed. Everybody who is disturbing them, he will be thrown the stones from up there. Ghosts, spirits, voices at this tower. It's a little bit scary. It's always the feeling of as if ants come to your come to your body. Okay, so where to next? This was Frankenstein's lab that was top secret. And there he did this experiment. And he was working with bodies. And so he knew he was there safe and nobody could come there. And this is the room where the people around the castle say, the ghost of Anne-Marie comes flying up here, settles down here, naked, nice, young and spicy. And she is crying and she is hoping and praying that her boyfriend will come back and be together with her up here. If there's a naked girl in this room, I will find her. <laughs> I will find him. I think there's quite a bit for us to do here. You've given us some great stories to work with. Thank you for coming. Thank you. I myself believe in ghosts. They are told in the Holy Bible that there are ghosts. And uh, I want to prove that there are good ghosts around Frankenstein Castle. All right, I'm going to show you how to set up the DVR. Here's our monitor. What I basically do is I try to get most of the room as possible. So you just want as much coverage as possible. Exactly. All right, now make sure the camera's good. That guy's got some uncomfortable looking armor on. Hey. Hey, guys. So how do we do? We got the DVR in the church, pointing mostly at the statue on the door. Basically, everybody's going to be carrying equipment with them tonight. Barry, if you wouldn't mind grabbing Josh and head up to the tower, and you can show him how we do an EVP session. Yeah. Sounds great. Love to. All right, let's get going. the tower where the legendary Anna Marie was here lighting candles to her lover to signal him to come up here to be together. Walter believes she comes up here she's nude. <laughs> <laughs> So normally when you do an EVP session, you use a digital audio recorder and a powered mic. Yeah. We're going to use that plus the ultrasonic. Some people believe that entities communicate with sounds that are beyond human hearing. The ultrasonic digital recorder allows us to pick up these sounds and plays them back in a frequency that we can hear. One, two, three. Anne-Marie, my name is Donna. Are you still waiting for your lover to come up and visit you? Our EVP style on Destination Truth differs considerably from GHI. We tend to just set the digital recorder and leave the area. We don't tend to do any call and response. We don't tend to actually talk while the uh, recorder's going. We cannot hear you now, but we want to play back these tapes and hear what you have to say. There is this fundamental question that I think a lot of people have, which is why can't we hear answers to these questions within the human hearing range? Why do we have to get them to these digital recorders? And are they there? Are we hearing these things? And so to watch and participate in a group of people, running that kind of an experiment is really interesting. It's great. Do you want to move on? Are you still attached to this room? Donna brings femininity and, and sort of gentleness to the way that she questions and encouraging style. Could you please give us a sign of your presence? Please talk with us. Are you the Frankenstein haunting the grounds? Were you guilty of the crimes of alchemy? And Barry has this kind of thoroughness and he tries to kind of approach it from different angles and seeing those styles work in concert is really interesting. Is it true you died by your own hand? Did you kill yourself? Could you please make a loud noise within this room? Josh, no doubt you've got the idea. Would you like to throw some questions? Okay, I'll give it a whirl. Is there anyone in this room with us? Can you make some sort of noise or some sort of sign to indicate your presence? They encourage me to ask uh, a few questions and uh, a strange experience for me because I don't have an expectation that I'm going to hear an answer and I will be really interested to hear if anything comes up on the tape. If you are here and you are a presence in this room, can you make yourself known? Okay, I think that's long enough. Right. Good job, Josh. Okay, guys, I think now we'll wrap up here. One of the aspects of this is the voices that are heard inside the chapel when no one else is in there. We've got a vent that actually runs above the ceiling of the church. goes all the way up. Josh, yeah. you mind heading in there? And we'll, no. you know, give it about 30 seconds and we'll start having a conversation. Josh, can you hear anything? Josh, Josh, if you can hear us, come back outside. <clears throat> Josh, are you there? Hey, 
So I, I can barely hear you, but it's really muffled. I don't think there's any way that I would mistake that as coming from inside. Okay. Good, good job, Andy. What about me? I didn't do a good job? You did a good job. Good job, Andy. You I stood did. and listened to things? Well, that's what I do. Donna and Shannon at Frankenstein Castle, and we're doing an EVP session in the chapel. If there's someone here with us in this chapel right now, can you please give us a sign of your presence? Is it you who is the statue in back of us? We heard a story that you broke your neck and died on these grounds. We ask that you communicate with us, please. Flash. If there's someone in the room and you're curious about us, it's okay to talk to us. Could you rock one of the pews back and forth? Bang on the wall? Why are you at Castle Frankenstein? Are you the alchemist? It's okay, we are not here to hurt you. Do you know the man that hangs out on the roof? <gasps> what? Is it a gasp? the chapel to do an EVP session. We had heard the story of the ghost that roams this chapel three inside and one appearance on the roof. We are told there are some spirits that reside in this church. Why are you at Castle Frankenstein? <gasps> what? Is that a gasp? Yeah, it was me. I thought you just stood up. Really? Mm-hmm. I saw like a shadow. Like, as if you stood up, but I didn't hear the creak in the pew as you stood up. I'm not, I'm... I know you're sitting right here. Perfectly still. And that's when I saw something behind me. I thought Shannon stood up, and she didn't. And I thought that was strange, because I would have heard the crack of the pew. When you stand up, you make movements. There's something in this... in this place, and I can't explain what happened. I can't explain it. chapel because Donna had a pretty impressive personal experience with the shadow in the chapel so we wanted to do an EVP session one of the interesting reports is that there's a ghost that actually exists on the top of the chapel also the stories that we've heard that we needed to investigate was that one of the statues of the night actually mysteriously talks to people EVP session in the chapel Rob and Andy we understand that there's someone in here who uh, from time to time will speak with people you think you can speak with us now? Who is it that remains here? I guess it get darker by the window for a second. No, oh, I think I saw it too. What Andy and I both did notice is that the window that looks outside grew dark for a moment. How high is that window? We needed to investigate it more. So we ended the EVP session. We left the chapel. We had to go around the back side of it. You saw that, right? Yeah, I did. And to our surprise, there was actually a 30, 40 foot drop from the ledge of the window down to the ground. There's the window right there. That's quite a drop. That's weird. We get something, some kind of shadow that appears 40, 50 feet in the air in a window by the cathedral. All right, so this is the tower. So the story here is people who stand under, walk under, are hit by rocks that are thrown. No, but it's only nasty people who... Nasty people. Or people, people who disturb the ghost. Okay. So right off the bat, this is what I'm noticing. It's the sound of rocks. Right. If it's like that up higher and a piece of it falls off, it's going to sound like rocks being thrown. Right. Andy, Andy, leave, leave, the, leave the tower stand. Okay, I'll try. This is Josh, Rob, and Andy. EVP session, Satan's Tower. If there's someone here who has been throwing rocks at passerby, none of us have a problem except maybe Josh getting a rock tossed at us right now. If you can hear me, please whip a rock in Andy's face. Is this sci-fi or Comedy Central, gentlemen? Well, but they said that the ghost only throws rocks at people who are disturbing the ghost. My comedy will disturb anyone. Andy, what do you think the chances of getting you up there are? You're right in my mind. So, they said we shouldn't go up there because it's rickety? Yeah, he said that it's too dangerous because it's old and dilapidated, but Andy weighs about 38 pounds. <laughs> so, Andy, if you can find a ladder. Yeah, just, just for clarification, did you just rip this pipe off the side of this castle? That would be typical Andy thing to do. 
I, I don't see any safety concerns with this at all. I'm just going to check out up here, see what we got. I started to explore it floor by floor. The first thing that I noticed is all the cement work from the walls did fall down, and it was right at the edge of the balconies. Hey, he's Rob. He's tour like he has. He's really... Guys, clear out for a minute. Stand back. Rob, listen. The whole step up here at the very edge is littered with pieces of concrete. So somebody shuts the door on their way in. Any kind of strong wind. It's really windy up here. It was a camera. <laughs> I just missed my head. Having been to some of the most remote locations in the world, it is truly impressive that my closest brush with death is Andy Andrews nearly killing me with a camcorder. Andy, there's any possibility of you not dropping something else yeah, up there? I'm good now. I don't think anything else up there? Anything else that I can A microwave. All right, you guys got it? Yeah. yeah. Good job, Andy. That was awesome. Shannon and I weren't here earlier during AVP session. Right. Her and I were both sitting on the front pew. And I swear to God, a black mass figure came, like, sitting up as Shannon stood up. Barry had the idea to uh, light these candles in the chapel, kind of, kind of set the mood a little bit, kind of get the ambiance going. This is Donna, Barry, and Josh in the chapel. Could you please tell us your names? Can you see us? Can you hear us? Are you angry that we are here? Is this disrespectful? Is there a presence in this room? Can you give us some sign that you're here? There's just a little spark of light caught me in that corner where the candles were lit. Barry thought he saw a flash of light, which he thought might have been the entity trying to manifest itself, so he blew out the uh, candles trying to make it easier for him to capture an image. Now you've got your darkness. When the candles were blown out, it went totally dark, and it's so black, there's no peripheral vision. Things got a little bit heavy. We are getting the feeling that you do not want us here. If so, if that is correct. Barry, where are you? I'm over here. All right. Where? Here. All I'm, right. I'm looking directly at you. Uh, I thought you were right in back of me. Something just walked right over here. Josh, Barry, and I went in the chapel to do an EVP session. Barry thought he saw a flash of light, which he thought might have been the entity trying to manifest itself, so he blew out the uh, candles trying to make it easier for him to capture an image. We blew out the lights, and it seemed to get more intense. We are getting the feeling that you do not want us here. If so, if that is correct... Barry, where are you? I'm over here. All right. Where? Here. All I'm, right. I'm looking directly at you. Uh, I thought you were right in back of me. Something just walked right over here. I have to, uh... I thought I saw something pass behind the pew that I was sitting in. I thought it was Barry. And I asked right away, is that you, Barry? Where are you? And his voice was coming from the other end of the pew. So I knew it wasn't him, but there was something like a black figure that just came across the back. And it really, really, it, it freaked me out. Donna had some sort of experience. But she was clearly startled. I certainly felt very tense. You want us to leave? Or are you a member of the church? Or are you something else? Is there a presence here that wishes to communicate? Josh was grand. He understood that we needed the silence within the session, and he participated within the questions. Is there a presence in this room? And it was exceptional. Okay. Let's end it there, Donna. Okay, good. Donna Shane. It's been great. I mean, between just sort of using eyes and ears and doing EDP sessions and a thermal walkthrough, I'm certainly getting a sense of the way in which this team works. Anne Marie? Are you still waiting for your lover to come back? We're also reaching a hand out to Johann Conrad Dippel, Frankenstein. Is there anything you wish to say to us? We're trying to communicate with you. Can you find a way to communicate with us? Is there anybody buried on this property? Is it your choice to remain here? Did you die here in the castle? third time this evening. Whatever is in here must recognize me by now. 
Donna had some activity occur earlier in the night. So we headed back to try to get whatever might have been in there to manifest itself under a little bit more controlled situation. What message are you trying to get through to the living world? Come through once again. Show everybody what I saw. See, the thing that bothers me about the light from the handy cam right there, it's, it's the same thing like with orbs. Mm -hmm. I mean, if the light hits a dust particle just right, yeah. it's going to be perceived like that. Right, yeah. So, I mean... You have, you know... Did you hear that? Yeah. Is anybody on here? Anybody do that? I've got nothing, Donna. I've got, hello? We both heard the door handle jiggle, and we really thought that somebody was coming through. There was no one out there whatsoever. All right, all team members call out. Where are you with your locations? We called on our walkies to see where all the team members were. They were all accounted for. They were nowhere in sight. We tried to find out how much force it would take to open that. I mean, I was throwing my shoulder into that door to recreate that same sound. No way. No way. It was this. Yeah, that's what we heard. <laughs> oh, my God. It, it answered us. That was pretty fun. <laughs> no, I don't want to swear. Somebody else witnessed what I had seen earlier in the night with a sound, and I'm um, pretty damn happy about it. We need to go back, review the film from that period that it went down, and check it out that we actually got something on tape. Brian and I went down toward uh, what was Frankenstein's secret lab, where he would experiment with uh, unstable nitroglycerin. If you miss one nitroglycerin, and you blow yourself out of the tower, right. and he falls in the trees, He's like, oh, he wasn't too badly hurt. That's a let. That is a lucky, lucky guy. Yeah. But of course, then later he poisoned himself. So. Yeah, and then I guess being I... stupid will catch up with you eventually. All right. Here we are. I'd like to do a little EVP work because he did bring dead bodies and stuff in there. Sure. I don't like to get too in-depth questions. Uh huh. Yes or no questions. Sure. Because you know the ghost doesn't have enough energy to give you a paragraph. Sure. Is that cool. Yeah. Is there anybody here that like to speak with us tonight? Brian has a, uh, a particularly singular style of, of ghost hunting. Yo, it. Brian won't, uh, he won't pander to a ghost. Watch this. There's one sitting here. What's up? <laughs> he won't ask a ghost nice questions. Come on out, jackass. Just goes right in, guns blazing. Come on. Let's go. It's a direct style, and I appreciate it. Like, I, I mean, I, I hate provoking like this because I feel like an ass. Yeah. It depends on how you react to what kind of spirit it is. Like, like if you got some 90-year-old old lady ghost, you can't sit there and say, bitch, show something, you know, because she's going to fly. You know, she's going to run sure. away. Sure. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's... There's no reason to speak to the elderly that way. <laughs> me, you know? Alive or dead. I, I was going to ask during the EVP session if news had reached the spirit world at, at how thoroughly I, I trashed Barry at darts last <laughs> night. Okay, guys, let's call it a night. If my EVP session and uh, castle tour with Brian was, was an evening highlight. Going that way. That was a very nice investigation. That was fun. There's this amazing, you know, commonality to almost every culture on Earth, that there is a relationship between cultures and civilizations and the afterlife and another world beyond our own. And I think for a group of people to come together, take a scientific standpoint and say, we're going to investigate that relationship and see if we can make contact with a world that we can't see and a world that we don't understand. I think that's great. Having Josh here tonight was great. Besides being so smart and intelligent and understanding our methodology and our protocol of how we go about investigations, which are similar to his, uh, he's just a down-to-earth, really fun person to be around, and uh, I hope we get another chance in the future to work with him again. Coming into Frankenstein's castle, of course, there's tons of legends, tons of histories, tons of stories. And I think the investigation was a complete success. Having Josh here was terrific. The guy's a real professional, and I'm really quite happy that Josh was able to join us. I was excited to come in and meet this group of people and really observe and to some extent participate in what they do, and I had a great time doing that. Walter. Hello. How are you? I hope you've had a nice time and you enjoyed the time with us at Frankenstein Castle. It's been a long night, but a terrific investigation. It's getting pretty late. We have a lot of data that we have to review. We're going to go over that, and hopefully we'll have something that we can show you. It's very good and very important for us to know. Thank you very much for Thank coming. You. Uh, Thank you. It was a nice time. The guys have been here for a long time, a whole night long, with a lot of equipment, and I hope you'll show me a lot of interesting things I've never known before.
We're at Postman's Brewery. This is one of those things that we go to all these amazing countries. We don't want to totally miss out on the culture. So this is a nice chance for us to take a break, relax a little bit, and check out what seems to be a really neat place. I mean, it might seem like a bit of a disconnect to visit a, a brewery while doing a, an investigation, but actually it's not. I think that exploring the culture of the places that you go to, especially when you're outside of your own culture, it's really important, and that actually informs you a lot about the people and what they do. And again, free booze. Big tanks. Yeah, so guys, uh, you see here, uh, really submarine. Uh, Mr. Bossman uh, buy this tank behind the second world war. They are, have 450,000 liters apple wine inside. Wow. The only place in the world which are submarines uh, for wine. All right, I was going to say, if somebody else is making apple wine in submarines, that would be impressive. Yeah. Okay, now we start wine. Martin was fantastic. He took the group through the process of how they make the apple wine and how it's aged in these hundred-year-old barrels. Donna, what are you doing? You're going to empty that whole thing. Oh, it's going to come pouring out. I would not do that. And it was a great lesson. Martin took the group through the process of how they're bottled. Very Laverne and Shirley in here. Yeah. It is very Laverne and Shirley in this room. And then ultimately we ended up in a room where we got to taste some of the, the product. So it was great to get out and try something different. All right, Martin, I'd like to make a toast. Uh, I want to thank you for inviting us all here to your factory. This is beautiful. It's great. We can't wait to taste the wine. You had a great time. Your country is wonderful. And again, we want to thank you for having us. So cheer. cheers. Cheers, Martin. Thank you. <laughs> Delicious. I'm a huge fan of hard cider. And I did learn a lesson today, and that is to never brush your teeth before a hard cider tasting. Barry wants to double fist that one. Try them all. Yeah, try them all, Barry. All right, Martin, well, thank you very much. We need to get back to work, but thank you for okay. taking the time and showing thank us around. Thank you for coming here. Who's driving? <laughs> Not Barry Fitzgerald. Thank you, Martin. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Barry, good job dispelling the myth about the Irish. <laughs> so we finished the tour and uh, got to taste a little bit of the uh, apple wine uh, and the hard cider they make, which was great. The company was terrific, and Martin was really nice, and it was really interesting to see how it's made. And we had a great time. Hey. Hey, hey, what's up, man? So, guys, Frankenstein's Castle. You and I had the experience of seeing the shadow move right past that window mm -hmm. that we know that nothing should have been moving past. Well, especially when it's a 40-foot drop on the other side. Would make it tricky. Mm. Shannon and Donna, you guys had an early experience. It's so interesting because it happened at the same location inside the chapel when Shannon and I had gone in there to do our EVP session. I was sitting on one end of the pew. She was on the other end. And I thought she had stood up. And I asked her, did you just stand up? But she said, no, I didn't stand up. But I saw a black figure stand up. Now, that was the first time. Mm -hmm. The second time is when Barry, Josh, and I had gone in. Josh and I were sitting on the front pew, and out of my peripheral, I saw a black figure mass walk directly in back, and I freaked out, and I thought it was you. And it, again, it was one of those rational, it couldn't be him because it was such a narrow opening that I would have had to hear, like, yeah. pews being moved. But So we had a bunch of personal experiences, but did we get the evidence to match up with it? And how do we do with the DVR setup in the chapel? Well, unfortunately, because the chapel was so cold and it was freezing outside, there was moisture condensation on the camera lens. Ah, that's too bad. How do we do with the EVPs? We got more than I thought. Barry here, he's the one of the founders. Now, this first EVP was taken in the chapel with myself, Donna, and Josh. I went to the door, opened the door, but it's this wave pattern here which interests me. There's definitely something there. Mm -hmm. huh. It's not English, that's for sure. Uh, how about you let Josh listen, see what he thinks? Sure. It does sound like speech. I would concur that if it is speech, it doesn't sound like English. The next one takes place in the top tower with myself, you, and Shannon. So have a listen. All right, that sounds like a whisper. If it is a voice, not that happy. Donna, take a listen. Uh, it's definitely a whisper. It sounds like a male. The next one is a little different. This is the ultrasonic. You got something with the ultrasonic. The ultrasonic picks something up inside the chapel. No wind, no footsteps, None of us talk. voices, nothing like that. This particular mic was pointed to the ceiling. Whatever this was, was up there above where Donna and Josh were sitting. Now have a listen to this. It's not going to be like anything you've heard. I don't know what that is. The ultrasonic picks something up inside the chapel. 
I don't know what that is. All right. It almost sounds digital to me. It, it sounds sort of like um, an audio reverberation. Mm -hmm. Because this EVP was captured on experimental equipment and we couldn't identify the sound, I felt that it would be best not to present this as evidence to Walter. So do we have anything else? When I was reviewing the tapes, we could actually hear when the door was opening when Andy and Donna were in the chapel. That was pretty neat. I got it all queued up here and I'll show you. Terrific. Right there. Yeah. Right there. The oh my God. Yep. That is great. You're both looking and there you go. <laughs> Look at Donna go. That's what I mean. It just feels really good to have another witness sit with me and hear that happening. Yeah. Yeah. To have the personal experiences, then back it up with some evidence, mm -hmm. yeah. that's always great. That's what we look for. Josh, you know, you went through every step of the investigation with us. Andy and I would really want you to go to the reveal and show Walter the evidence that we collected. That'd be great. I would love that. You two actually worked together on the research on this one. How'd it turn out? I, I think the, the big problem with the research is that there's just a lot of holes in the historical record mm -hmm. uh, for this castle. And really, there's almost 400 years of history uh, starting in the 13th century until when Conrad Dippel is born there and there's very little information about what's happening there at that time and and then after that it seems like a lot of the data is really um, more folkloric than, than historical. Alright, so we're ready to go Brian, if you get that ready. Thanks a lot, good job everybody. At this point, we're excited to go see Walter and see what he thinks of the evidence. We have some EVPs of unknown language, we're pretty sure it's not English, so it would be exciting if it was German and Walter can shed some light on it. Hi, Walter. Nice to see you. Good to see you. Hi. Hi, Walter. Hi. Hi. When you gave us a tour. You told us some of the stories you had heard. And we come in and we look for alternatives to the stories of the paranormal. We use a range of equipment when we do our investigation. EMF detectors, FLIR camera that picks up heat sinks, IR cameras, handheld digital recorders to try to document anything that we might experience throughout the night. We did have incredible personal experiences. Donna and Shannon were in the chapel, a tape recording asking questions. Donna was sitting in the front pew. She thought that Shannon was sitting directly behind her because she noticed a shadow standing up. She turned to ask Shannon, why are you standing up, except that there was no one there. That's known about this chapel. Andy and I went in to see if we could figure out what was going on. We saw a dark shadow move in front of the back window. That window is 40 or 50 feet in the air. No one was walking past that no. window. I first thought myself that are trees. This wasn't a tree. Right. It was like a moving shadow that came up across the windows. And we thought that was interesting because you had mentioned the story of a ghost being reported on the roof. Yes. But that wasn't the end of the personal experiences. Barry, Donna, and Josh entered the chapel again. Barry saw a shadow cross again behind Donna. Donna caught it out of the corner of her eye. Yes, that's told by a lot of people. Donna and I decided to go back. We were filming ourselves. From out of nowhere, we actually heard a sound. And I'd like to play that for you right now. Oh, yes, it would be very interesting. I know this sound. I heard it myself. And what's cool, Walter, is that we actually captured the moment on one of the cameras. decided to head back to the chapel. From out of nowhere, we actually heard a sound. I know this sound. I heard it myself. And what's cool, Walter, is that we actually captured the moment on one of the cameras. What's it like seeing it on tape? This sound is coming sometimes, mostly in the evening, and I don't know where it comes from. It was actually the door handle opening. I was up in the tower, so I knew where my team was at the time, and I could look down at Josh and Brian, so we knew that there was no one near that area at that time. It won't rattle by itself. The wind cannot shake it in its place. It's very hot to yes, push it. To, to yeah. push it down. We continued on to try and figure out what exactly is going on. So we use our digital voice recorders. Sometimes we get voices or sounds that we have no explanation for. We're hoping maybe you would recognize what it is. Now this first large spike area, that's going to be the door closing. What I want you to pay attention to is that second area right there. There's somebody talking behind. So what did you hear? I hear the voice speaking in old German language. Can you translate it for us? In English, Abo is here. What is the phrase in German? Abo Gast ist hier. 
Erbo is a nickname for Arbogast, the first knight of Frankenstein we know about. We have a document about him. He was a powerful, mighty knight. And to say Arbogast is here means to take a spear into the ground and to say, here I am, here I stay, and I never want to go off. We had no idea what this said. What do you feel when you hear this? I'm quite astonished. Okay. Do you definitively think that that's German language? I'm sure. And what makes me shiver is that I, at the very moment, found out what it was. Now, this next one that we captured was up in the tower. It was myself, Barry, and Shannon. We're doing a tape recording, but we don't hear any voices until we go back and listen to the tape. It's old German language. That means kommt her, come here. Is this like a friendly way? Like you were speaking to a friend or someone you were aggressive with? It's more friendly. It's as if a boss calls his people to come to him. Not aggressive, but with authority. The spirit of the alchemist, the boss of this area, was frequently seen in that same tower. Yes. You're saying that it's like an invitation for someone to come to you. When this was captured is when Barry starts asking questions. So it seemed odd that this voice would appear and immediately afterwards, Barry would begin his questioning. The bad news, Walter, is we did not find the naked woman. <laughs> I'm very interested in it. I know you are. <laughs> As a historian yourself, you can appreciate that what we try and do is research some of the legend and some of the stories. Josh and Donna worked together and had some interesting results. Yeah, I mean, certainly, Walter, you know uh, better than any of us the history of this castle. We've written about it. Uh, and, and we went back and, and really tried to separate the historical record here from uh, the legends and the, and the fairy tales. Uh, this castle has uh, a, a very rich, textured, legitimate history, but there's also so many stories that really can't be verified and, and don't really appear in historical records associated with this place. You have to do a hard work if you want to differ between legends and true history. I noticed that when you guided us around, you sort of breathed life into both the real history of this castle and the legends of the castle. Prior to this team coming here, did you believe this castle was haunted? I, I, you, you walk a fine line, and I can never tell if you if you really believe that it's haunted. I was not sure. I was not sure. Do you feel, I was not sure. Do you feel more convinced now that the team has come here? Yes. And now we have a place that is favored by spirits to stay here. So given the personal experiences, the video, the audio, we definitely feel that there is paranormal activity taking place here. There are good ghosts around us. Sure. Well, Walter, thank you so much for your time, the tour. Your explanation of what was going on here is incredible. We'd love to come back again sometime. I hope you come back, and I hope to see you again. It would be very nice for me, too. Thank you very much. Thank you, Walter. Thanks. Cheers, Walter. Thanks. I thought that there could be something strange on the castle, that there could be something around. But I never imagined that there could be such experiences as you showed to me, that I could see something and hear something like that. That touched me. And I'm very happy that they did what they did here. Walter's reaction to some of that stuff was huge. That EVP that we got, we didn't understand it. It didn't make any sense to us, but, you know, look what happened. Yeah, I mean, for him to just be kind of totally taken aback, dumbfounded, and say, you know, I know what that is. That's old German. Nobody has spoken that since, like, 200 A.D. And then for him to say, well, there's no way that you guys could have known about this. You know, I, I felt that he was really satisfied with the results that we gave him. I would agree 100%. Well, I think he was over the moon. I think it was a home run for him. And for him to come out and say, you know what, you actually changed my mind about this. You know, that was a pretty big moment for me. For sure. I think for him, the work that you guys did validated these stories for him in a, in a sense and kind of maybe turned him into a believer. And I have no doubt that in the days and weeks and, and years to come, he'll be telling more stories about Castle Frankenstein that involve all of us and involve the experiences that we had here. And so to be now a part of the you know, folklore and, and, you know, history of this castle is, uh, that's, that's a thrill. You know, I think Destination Truth and Ghost Hunters International cut from the same cloth. You know, we, we all come in as skeptics. And Josh, you know, I'm really happy that you were able to come out with us and, and see what we do. Guys, I was thrilled to be here for real. And, uh, and let's do it again. My team and your team are, you know, working all over the world. And hopefully our paths will cross again somewhere and we can join forces again. No, we'd definitely love to do it. Absolutely. That'd right. be cool. All right, guys. Well, Andy, Josh, good job, guys. On to the next.